back to Straight No Chaser. This is episode 29. We have a guest, Siraj. Siraj, how are you doing? Not bad. Awesome. Um, so Siraj is into fitness. Um, he's going to tell us a little bit about that. He also goes to UMass Amherst. We'll probably get into that as well. Alex, did you want to lead off the interview? Yeah, so how's it going, guys? So my guest here, Siraj, is actually we're friends from high school. We went to Arlington High School together. Siraj is originally from Dorchester in Boston. Um, he is a power builder, which means someone who's both a fitness trainer and a, um, a uh, bodybuilder. Sorry, power lifter and bodybuilder um, is what I meant to say. But he's very into health and fitness and, um, and nutrition. So he's going to talk to us a little bit today about how he got into power lifting, um, kind of some aspects on it. So some things that he kind of like... So maybe some tips he wants to give to people, but also some specifics that um, people might want to know about powerlifting and bodybuilding. And we're going to talk a little bit kind of about uh, his major in kinesiology and a little bit why he got into that. So to start us off, Siraj, um, oh, by the way, we're also going to talk a bit about his Instagram because he's got, he's kind of become like a, a bit of an influencer on Instagram with his videos, I would say. And... Um, so to start us off, what got you into power building? What got you into like lifting, strength training, and kind of um, what drives you to put all that commitment into um, bodybuilding? So at first, I would give it definitely to my dad. He was lifting when he was younger, and he's always pushed me to do some pull-ups, some sit-ups, some push-ups. So I'll definitely give it to him first. And then, of course, in high school, I started doing sports, and you were required to lift for football, wrestling, and track. So I just became obsessed with lifting weights pretty much from that. So um, I like that you mentioned that because uh, we were also on the track team together. So um, I was going to say, with uh, the workouts that you did in, in, in football and wrestling and track, like what were some of the workouts that you got from practice that really stuck with you that kind of you're like, I can take this further and make this like a, a passion of mine? Definitely, first and foremost, the coaches stressing warm-ups. I definitely didn't take that seriously until later into lifting, like, you have to warm up it's so important and also just like building your leg strength for your vertical because i did hurdles so just like building your legs really helped a lot too yeah absolutely um so i'm sure you have like personal bests for a bunch of the different like powerlifting um exercises like deadlift bench uh did you want to go through maybe your maxes for those I haven't done a one rep in a while, but okay. right now for squat, it's 315 for eight reps. Damn. Deadlift, 405 for three reps. <laughs> so important. I've really done like a max rep, but I've done 225 for a three by two. Okay. Wow. Yeah, that front squat's no fucking joke, man. I remember uh, doing those in high school. Uh, what what position did you play for football? Running back and outside linebacker. Oh damn! Yeah, yeah. Having a front squat like that certainly helped. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Back squat three fifteen for eight. Oh jeez. Yeah. 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 No front squat. No, definitely not. Yeah, that's pretty out there, man. So what's your weekly schedule look like for powerlifting? Like how many days a week and how many hours per day do you usually spend in the gym? I run a three-day split. The first day, legs. Second day, push. Third day, pull. Then I'll do a rest day, and then I'll repeat that until the week is over. Awesome. And how did you, uh, how did you kind of... How'd you learn how to like kind of build your like lifting schedule? Like, you know, there's like, there's a bunch of exercises you have to do to work out a certain muscle group and it can't just all be power. There has to be stuff that kind of like 
lateral movement and flex movement. So how do you kind of figure out that plan as you go into the week? I pretty much followed like a basic um, powerlifting schedule, splitting up into those three days. And um, also, what was your what was the other part of your question? I was just kind of wondering. So, like, uh, like I feel like a lot of the time people need like a trainer to develop that program for them. So I was kind of hoping you could share some insight into how you kind of built that program for yourself. Okay. So definitely you need a separation in between each muscle group that you do. So that's why for the legs, push, pull, split, you can't squat and deadlift one day after the other. That's why I put that rest day in there. Yeah. Then also the push day separates the squat and deadlift. So it's separating your lowers and your uppers. Okay. Right. And um, so, like you mentioned, so do you um, you divide up the days, of course, like for which muscle group you're doing, like per week, and how many days did you say a week that you train? About five to six. Five to six. Okay, so you have like one rest day, right? Yeah, I think the way it works. Correct me if I'm wrong. Is like you do it in three day sessions, and then you take a rest day. So it's five to six, depending on um, like the layout of the week and how many rest days are in that week, essentially. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. what I got from it too. Yeah, so I was doing the I'm math. Good. <laughs> I got you. And um, so uh, with um. So, of course, like with this schedule of working out, so like dividing up which days you're going to do which muscle groups and stuff, um, how does that kind of fit in with like like when, when you work out in a day, do you go to the gym like once a day or twice a day? And if you go, do you do like, for example, upper body, um, like you'll do like triceps in the morning and then you'll do something like uh, biceps or back or, or sorry, no, biceps in the morning and then um, back in the afternoon. Do you do something like that or do you only focus on one specific muscle and just hit the gym once a day? So I do once a day and okay. my sessions are about two hours and I program it to where I do my compounds first so if I'm if it's a leg day I'll do my squats I'll do my warm-up sets and then go up to my top sets like a four by six three by three and then I'll do my back off sets and then after that I'll do all accessory machines and that's pretty much how each session goes okay and is there a uh... Is there a particular workout that you kind of like, like which ones do you enjoy more? Which ones do you kind of like, uh, like not look forward to as much, if you know what I mean? Definitely volume days for lower, for my lower half. Like if it's like um, a 4x12 or a 3x8 on squats, it sucks. Or for deadlifts too. It just sucks. Like volume days, I hate them. That makes sense. Uh, and you said you're a trainer as well, right? So, um, no, I'm not a trainer. No, he's not. Yeah, he, he makes training videos though on Instagram. Oh, yeah. oh that's yeah. sick. Talk yeah. about your Instagram a little bit. So what's going on on there? <laughs> so Instagram was something that I made when I was like probably like – Right after high school, so you can't have too many people bothering you in the school. For sure. Yeah. Better way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> it was, like, kind of just, like, a page just to, like, show my progress and kind of document my journey. But um, I realized, like, if you add useful information, you just connect with so many people in the fitness industry that you'd never meet in person. So it's just, like, a... It's just a way to connect with a community that you bond with, pretty much. That's awesome. That's pretty cool. I was going to say, you can make a lot of, like, connections through that. And I also like how if you look at your Instagram, you you have it divided up. You have deadlifts, squats, quads, 
and then like meals and snack plan you have it kind of so people can like if they're interested in getting advice on a specific workout they can click on that and um, I actually like also how you include the meal slash snacks so I was gonna say I know that you got like very like specific in your dieting and what you eat I see you making kind of uh, interesting stuff sometimes like uh, eggs with rice for breakfast for example and I was just wondering like um What's kind of your diet plan? Like, are there any foods, like, you don't eat or foods that you'll eat a lot of? Like, are you like Tom Brady? You have, like, a very unique, like, strict diet plan. I was just wondering if you would want to share avocado it. ice cream. Yeah. If you want to share a bit on that. <laughs> but, uh, avocado ice cream sounds disgusting, but <laughs> I'm not super strict, but I do track my calories and my macros, and it's – for rice and eggs, like, that's just the easiest thing to, like, make in the morning. You just warm up the rice, you toss the eggs in it. But um, usually I eat pretty clean, and then I'll have snacks throughout the day. So I'm not super restrictive on things. Do you take, uh, like, a stance towards red meat? Do you try and, like, limit consumption of red meat or just meat in general at all? Or what's your stance on it, kind of? I don't eat as much red meat as I used to. Okay. I don't Is there know. a reason? No. no. I just don't like the taste of it that much anymore. It's fair. Interesting. It's also not that Is... great for you. Yeah. <laughs> just high in fat content, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. It's like not, not very lean. It's high in protein, though, too, but I guess you can get your protein from other sources just as much. Yeah. yeah you fish. Can. Um. Yeah, I was going to say, what, what foods would you recommend to the viewers that, like, um, they add to their diet if they're they're trying to kind of keep a active lifestyle like for for lift someone who lifts a lot what kind of foods would you recommend a staple is always going to be chicken and rice and then toss some greens in there eggs because that's super easy um turkey that's a good one and that's pretty much it. Like, those are the staples for me. I just rotate. Then I'll also eat fish as well. Okay. Like salmon. And yeah. do you change, do you change, like, what you eat depending on um, which kind of, like, work, like, which workout you're going to do? Because, like, I remember in track, like, uh, if we, I was back when I used to do distance before I switched over to sprinting, I eat a lot of like avocados and stuff high in like potassium because it keeps you, it keeps your energy going and avoids like cramps. So if you like on days you run, do you eat different foods as opposed to days that you're just trying to like bulk and do like, uh, like upper body workouts? Depending on my workout, my diet doesn't change, but say if I were, cutting or bulking which i've never cut i would change the intake of calories yeah yeah i've actually uh i recently started getting into like uh tracking my actual caloric intake and like looking at my macros because uh i've been trying to cut weight actually uh yeah. I did pretty well and then it kind of plateaued but uh yeah it's just it's so helpful to have that like uh you never really like think about what's going in your body until you actually start tracking everything. Then you, you kind of get a picture of what your diet's like. And are you using my fitness pal? I am actually. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I got this like rip off Fitbit, which doesn't sync with my fitness pal, but <laughs> from DH gate or Alibaba. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, it's this Chinese company called Lintelec. I was like, Kenny would love this, but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's been really great. Actually. It helps a lot. And then, uh, I think since I started tracking, I just, uh, like what I do mostly is like yogurt and granola in the morning and my snacks are pretty much like hummus, carrots and nuts and kind bars. So like almonds, cashews, pistachios, kind bars. Sir, Raj, what would question, you... But do do nuts have protein in them? Yeah. Yeah. That's they have a, they have a lot of protein. They have a actually. lot. Okay, that makes sense. Actually, nuts are really a source of fat. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, actually, I have been seeing that. And I was also but surprised it's... to see that blackberries have a lot of fiber. I was That was pretty cool to learn. But the thing isn't, like, a, the nuts source of fat. It's, like, a healthier source than, like, trans yeah. fat yeah. that's in yeah. process. It's right. Yeah. 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 It's way healthier like meat and dairy well you need okay. fats throughout the day that's pretty yeah. much where i get mine that and yogurt i'm pretty sure the main reason that humans need so much fat is because it helps store water energy. and like it wa- okay energy <laughs> well yeah water too yeah interesting yeah are we gonna say something on that sir yeah the nuts are calorically dense like they have more calories per macro per ma- na- macronutrients. So it's like if you're cutting, I w- like you can eat them, but don't have them as like your main snack because yeah. I would find that I'd be more hungry throughout the day. Yeah, uh, the reason why I gravitated towards them is I can have like a few handfuls and I'll feel like, like satisfied. Like I won't want to go grab something else to eat for a bit. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, I think, yeah, I'm still learning though. I might, I'm honestly, after you tell me that I might slow down with the nuts, switch to something else, go more veggie heavy. That'll help fiber. Yeah. Fiber kills your hunger. Okay. Yeah. What would you say, actually, um, Suraj, like for someone, first of all, for someone who's trying to bulk, what would you say the best um, exercises and the best uh, nutrients is, like foods to eat? And then for someone who's cutting, what would you say the best exercise and best food is? So for exercise, bulking or cutting, it actually doesn't matter as much. You can stick to your compounds and do your hypertrophy, no matter if you're cutting or bulking. But for diet, that's where the difference is. So for someone who's bulking, they're obviously going to eat in a caloric surplus. They're going to be eating more foods than their maintenance calories. For someone who's cutting, they're going to eat under. And okay. yeah. And uh, what kind of um. What kind of like foods would you recommend for some? You said nuts for someone is who cutting who's cutting isn't great. You said fiber is better. What's a good food for someone who's bulking? Pretty much my same staple foods: okay. chicken, <laughs> salmon, turkey. Like I would stick to like clean meals and then toss a few snacks in there. All right, but, sounds um, good. And um. What's up? I would say, like, for cutting, if you toss in a few chicken salads, that would help you. Yeah. Because it, it's more volume and less calories and salad and vegetables and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. I might have to start doing that. So, actually, I was going to ask with the topic, um, since we talked about different workouts and nutrients, the, uh, the last topic I wanted to touch on was um or one of the last was uh supplements so um what supplements are you currently taking right now and what kind of supplements do you recommend to any of our viewers who are trying to get into fitness and health i am currently taking protein powder whey protein yeah okay protein pre-workout um what kind of pre-workout is it it's uh it's from this company called my protein it's it's a pretty standard like mainstream one it's nothing insane okay yeah and what else are you you taking anything else omega-3 fatty acids and that's because right now i'm actually on this medication called accutane yeah the side effect is like drying up your joints and um it also interferes with your liver so yeah. um, drinking a lot of water and taking omega threes for that wow okay and what kind of uh what would you say are some basic supplements for someone who's starting out with strength training i would say pretty much protein powder 
pre-workout because it's fun. Like, it's so fun to take. Um, Unless you take too much. Yeah. You, like, end up having a heart attack. Yeah. But I know what you mean. Like, I took it once in the gym. I took, like, a little too much, but it felt like I could lift anything there. But then I couldn't get to bed for, like, hours because it was, like, a late-night workout. But it's just, like, an insane feeling. Like, it gets you motivated. Yeah. What does does pre-workout actually do to your body? Does it just, like, speed up your heart rate pretty much? The caffeine does speed up your heart rate. But it also has a lot of different types of vitamin B in it. Um, it has um, a compound called beta alanine, which basically um, helps with blood circulation. So it gives you the pump feeling. Okay. So it helps basically speeding up your heart and then blood flow. Yeah. It has like amino acids in it too, right? Yeah. At least some do. Yeah. Okay. And. Um, Okay, so would you say, would you prefer whey protein over uh, plant-based protein or collagen? Like, which of those would you say is, like, probably the best for someone who's starting out? Because I took, I used to take whey for a while, and I noticed some effects from it, definitely. But, like, it just, I don't know, it didn't sit as well with me. I felt like I, like, I don't know, kind of was just, like, I switched over to collagen and it just felt much like leaner kind of it made it like gave me more like energy and stuff like a collagen based protein so I was just wondering if you'd recommend like whey or plant protein or collagen or like what kind definitely if you're lactose I wouldn't suggest whey but um what I'm learning in class right now is um 94% 94% of the pro- no the protein that you consume we only we only take up 94% of it no matter if it's plant or animal which is kind of useful and then if you're lactose so if you think about that if you're lactose and you're taking whey protein you're getting less than the 94% because some of that protein is from milk or just like okay. it's- yeah. yeah, whey. Yeah, whey comes from milk, so that makes sense. But um, what's your like opinion on collagen and, and plant based protein? I've never you think t- it's good. I've never used collagen protein, so not much of a say on that. Um, plant based. I actually have a plant based protein. I use it sometimes. It's definitely a lot. Um, the serving for protein is lower than whey, but I wouldn't say it's bad at all. Okay. And uh, you mentioned um, like what you're learning in class. So I mentioned earlier that you're a kinesiology major. So like, uh, what kind of inspired you to take that up as your major and and your your um, field of study? So. Kinesiology pretty much translates to the movement of the body. So, like, I'm so fascinated with the human body. Like, it's it's amazing what it can do and, like, how it adapts. So, kinesiology is pretty much the perfect major for me. It's like, I just want to learn and kind of use that to apply to my fitness knowledge to maybe, like, think of the best ways to... Um, improve your workout the fastest ways to recover from an injury like that's pretty much what this major is going to teach me so like you're learning a lot about i'm assuming then you're not only learning about like um like kind of physical training and like orthopedics like that kind of like bones muscle you're also learning probably about like anatomy and like um like kind of health and nutrition sciences like we mentioned is that kind of like what you're studying it's like a yeah. Okay. So, um, with that, like, uh, where do you kind of see? Uh, do you see yourself well using that to like as a future with a, uh, to get a future career? Like, uh, do you see yourself maybe as becoming like a personal trainer or like uh, working in a gym um, down the road? Definitely. I'm thinking something along the lines of 
strength and conditioning coach, physical therapist, or maybe just go into research. Combining those, I'm just not really sure yet how to apply them yet. That sounds cool, though, if yeah. you could do the, the research aspect of it. So, like, the research in the anatomy of the human body and the nutrition, and then combine that with the physical aspect of it and, like, the orthopedic and uh, kinesthetic, body kinesthetic uh, aspect of it. So, have you, uh, uh speak? What's up? Uh, no, you can go, Abby. Suraj, have you ever seen uh, Jeff Nippard on YouTube? Yeah. Uh, he's a natural, like, fitness influencer. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. But what's really cool about his videos is, uh, I think the way he sets himself apart is he'll bring up, like, research studies and quote them, and he'll go through multiple, like, He'll tell you, like, these people found this, and then he'll find, like, three other studies and tell you, like, whether they disagreed or, like, he'll give you, like, an overall picture of what the industry, like, standard is today. Yeah. I've actually seen a few of his videos. He goes really into depth, which I do like. Yeah. Like, he really gives you, like, the science point of view. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So we mentioned um, health supplements earlier. Um, we're going to go into a more specific category, but this um, article was published by Harvard Health Publishing from Harvard Medical School, and the title is Don't Buy Into Brain Health Supplements. And um, we're going to get uh, Siraj and everyone um, in the call's opinion afterwards. So the tagline is, forget about those over-the-counter products that promise better memory. Let me get into this right now. All right, so a recent survey found that 25% of adults over 50 take a supplement to improve their brain health with the promise of enhanced memory and sharper attention and focus. The problem? There's no solid proof any of them work. Quote, the main issue with all the over-the-counter supplements is the lack of reg regulation. Dr. Marshall, Associate Medical Director at the Center for Alzheimer Research and Treatment at Harvard-affiliated Brigham and Women's Hospital. Quote, the FDA doesn't oversee product testing or ingredient accuracy. Uh, they just look for supplements that make health claims related to the treatment of specific diseases. End of quote. Uh, in terms of brain health, this means a supplement manufacturer can claim uh, products help with mental alertness or mem memory loss, but not that it protects against or improves dementia or Alzheimer's disease. Quote, this way manufacturers don't have to back up any claim that their product is effective or either, either safe, uh, end quote, says Dr. Marshall. All right, so we're going to get into the combination of nutrients mentioned. Many brain supplements focus on omega-3 fatty acids, such as those found in fish oil, vitamin E, various B vitamins, or various combinations. Why these? Uh, the, there's strong evidence that certain diets, like the Mediterranean diet, the DASH diet, uh, and the MIND diet, I'm assuming these are just two mainstream diets many viewers might know, uh, can help improve cognitive functioning, according to Dr. Marshall. Quote, these diets contain um, foods with large amounts of these vitamins and minerals, end quote, he says, but, quote, uh, but what's not clear is whether the combination of nutrients in these diets are beneficial or whether it's specific ones or even in certain amounts or some other factors, end quote. Researchers have tried to answer these questions by testing how these individual nutrients might affect cognitive health. So far, limited studies have found no evidence they help with few rare exceptions. All right, so now I'm going to break down each one. Uh, omega-3 fatty acids, fish oil, there are three types of omega-3, um, which are found mostly in fatty fish like salmon and mackerel, um, and they're also found in leafy green vegetables, Brussels sprouts, spinach, uh, vegetable oils, canola, soybean, uh, and nuts and seeds, wa uh, walnuts and flax seeds. Um, oh, I just lost it. Give me one second to get it back. All right, fish is a staple in the Mediterranean and mine diets, among others, and studies have found an association with higher intake of fish and a lower cognitive decline. Um, however, omega-3 supplements haven't shown the same effect. Uh, any benefits seems to come from a greater intake of fish and not coming from fish oil supplements. Uh, vitamin E, 
is an antioxidant believed to help brain health by reducing um, stress. It's only been found, or it's the only supplement that has been found to have any positive benefit. A 2014 study in the journal Nutrients reviewed the existing research on vitamin E and various health issues such as stroke um, disease or heart disease and Alzheimer's disease. The researchers found that a high dose of vitamin E may help people with moderate to or mild Alzheimer's dementia uh, come to perform daily life functions for a short period of time. However, vitamin E does not prevent uh, the disease or, uh, progression or reduce the symptoms. And high doses increase the risk of stroke. Um, and then just goes into B vitamins, which are the different types, B6, B9, B12 and how they uh, produce energy needed to develop new brain cells. However, they don't stop the progression of Alzheimer's disease or dementia. So basically, what I took from this article is that over-the-counter uh, vitamins, well, are a great um, addition and can help you, like if you're normal, and maybe it can serve as like a stable, um, don't really help you if you're like predisposed to any disease coming down the line to you. Like they can't be used for prevention of a disease. What do you think, uh, Siraj, and then the rest of you guys can answer? I've heard of pre-workouts with, I think they're called nootropics or something. Mm -hmm. But kind of just like to stimulate the brain. TB12. <laughs> exactly. But like they stimulate the brain, the brain to make things more like vibrant. But I've never heard of like any brain supplements to prevent diseases. Yeah, for sure. I feel like all they really do maybe um, is make someone maybe less prone to have a compromised immune system. And that way they might help. But like overall, they're not actually going to prevent you from getting any major diseases that you're genetically predisposed to. Yeah. Essentially. That's, that's what I took from the article. What, what do you other guys think? Uh, I would say overall, like, yeah, I mean, uh, I feel like we see a lot of like, like fads like this kind of in fitness industry just cause like people need to make money. But like, honestly, like, uh, like people develop, like, I just think balanced diet and proper workouts will, and getting enough rest will pretty much keep you healthy and keep your immune system uh in good shape i mean you can't like avoid getting sick for your entire life you know once in a while it'll happen but just an active lifestyle and a balanced diet will solve a lot of problems yeah i mean i think there's definitely <clears throat> certain supplements um that can prevent like illnesses but i don't know if there's or sorry no sorry tree <laughs> illnesses <laughs> I was tree illness <laughs> There's definitely certain substances that can treat illnesses. Prevent? I don't think so. Because, like, if you're getting, you like, like Bird just said, if you're going to get sick, you're going to get sick. And I'm they've down said here that. To try my nutritional magic potion. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> they said. <laughs> that shit's been around since, like, like, the dawn of, like, time with personal health, like, supplements that prevent this, that prevent that. And, like, there's stuff like i know like vitamin um vitamin e i believe it is like if you have a sunburn or any kind of other burn that actually does speed up the healing process like it does help treat your skin yeah. but putting covering yourself in vitamin e is not going to prevent a sunburn <laughs> it's gonna make you look or like, like if you put your hand in fire yeah it's not going to prevent a burn yeah. so i think there's some truth to that but there's a lot of horse shit in it as well so I think yeah, I, that's honestly, my takeaway. I thought what the, what the study was going to more focus around was like memory loss and more cognitive benefits compared to where it went, where it's like, oh, it doesn't prevent these diseases. Obviously, it doesn't prevent these diseases. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, well, what, you're going to take vitamin E and all of a sudden, you know, Alzheimer isn't going to be something that you have to worry about or worry about down the line? Obviously not. <laughs> That's like when you go on the internet and you get those little ads on the side to, like, eat this and you'll never have to worry about getting fat. It's like some nasty looking shit and they're like, this burns body fat. Or like the doctors hate him. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's different, though. That's uh, about... Yeah. Those supplements all... work, huh? 
Uh, I don't know. Have you tried it out? <laughs> no, yeah. I feel like the thing about these supplements, though, is that they do, like, in a balanced diet, they do have some overall benefits. And, and like, it's been shown through the article that I read that they do help either increase energy um, or what did vitamin E do? It reduced um, uh, symptoms of some some illnesses because of uh, yeah. like, because of immune support. But it doesn't, like, actually yeah. prevent disease. <laughs> With the burns and stuff. Actually, yeah. vitamin C also, like, that's been scientifically proven that boosts your um, uh, white blood cells, your antioxidants, and, and helps fight off illnesses. That's why if you eat a high vitamin C diet or take vitamin C supplements, you are less likely to get sick, but it doesn't prevent you from getting sick. Yeah. It just helps you. Like it basically, even it, it doesn't even necessarily mean that you won't l less likely get sick. It just means when you do get sick, the symptoms won't be as bad. Because Actually, also, I should mention it says omega three fatty acids help uh, build cell membranes in the brain and have an inflammatory, anti inflammatory, uh, anti antioxidant. Well, omega omega three isn't like a new thing. Like that's yeah. like something. Yeah. Uh, that's why people take fish oils. Yeah, fish yeah. oils. And it's, it's something that lacks in our normal diets, like a, on yeah. average. Like, Well, I think people who eat large, <laughs> or large amounts of fish probably have higher omega-3 yeah. levels. Like, the American diet isn't really... Uh, yeah, no, they've studied that. Like, they've studied yeah. that. People who live like... Like, what are they called? Like, Inuit people? People who have, like, really high diets and... Um, yeah because of all the fish they eat and that kind of stuff they've studied that they as a result um don't catch certain illnesses as easily so yeah it helps it's a, like budget. blood circulation doesn't it yeah. like eating like fish and uh omega-3 yeah fatty acids are good for the brain actually mm -hmm. so I do, that that part of the, the article is true but like i said some of it is just like like you don't need to be a scientist to fucking know <laughs> But it is it's a it's an interesting subject, I yeah. will say. Yeah, for sure. They would have been better off selling that product they said it improves memory. Yeah, yeah. probably. <laughs> yeah. Not preventing Alzheimer's. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, see I don't know I don't know if there'll ever be something that they sell that can improve memory. I mean, at least it's not as outrageous as what they used to try and sell. Like, dude, they used to sell, like, crack and, like, cocaine. Like, doctors used to, like, prescribe patients. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> bro, what about Elon Musk's human brain chip, bro? That'll work, no? I don't, yeah. That's not related to health, is it? I mean, I guess it could be, but... No, I thought it was helping people with brain de uh, deficiency. Well, yeah, that's what he's targeting it's... it to to do early yeah. on. It's like he's trying to help it's people improved. with stem cell damage or stuff like that. Yeah, that exactly. might actually be legit. That's it. Yeah, because yeah, everyone should put... Yeah, I'm not er rare shit, earth you know? metals in their head. That's a great yeah. idea. Sign me up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean for you it wouldn't hurt but people, most i'm people... like the guy i'm like that guy that they send out on spaceships they strap a bible to you and send you up into the sky yeah. while all the scientists are like behind the bunker like watching you go. <laughs> you're like that guy who like they go like what's that movie where they go on the planet and like the years are different so they only go on the planet for like 10 minutes and then they come back and the guy's old and like gray that's jake he's like the guy who has to wait back in the ship for them and <laughs> waits there for like 50 years <laughs> i'd like i wouldn't be i'd lose my shit before that yeah yeah one thing that's like uh uh really i just i'm going off here but like uh with this like brain chip thing the idea is so ridiculous like like look around at the technology in your life right is there anything that you haven't had to replace in the course of five to ten years now imagine putting that technology in your fucking head <laughs> like think think about it you're like updating your smartphone maybe <laughs> Yeah, yeah like, just... it's gonna corrode, it's gonna get old, like... By the way, I kinda, it's kinda off topic to this, but has any, have any of you watched, uh, Seaspiracy? Like, the new documentary on Netflix? No. I haven't. It's about commercial fishing, it's actually pretty cool, because we're mentioning, uh, omega-3 <laughs> fatty acids, it yeah. kinda goes off of this. But, like, 
Dude, apparently, like, 46% of plastics in the ocean are related to commercial fishing. They're, like, fishing nets or, like, uh, lines from fishermen. Wow. Pretty oh, really? crazy. Yeah, you would think it'd be less than that, but it was yeah, uh, nuts right. to me. Dude, 30,000 dolphins. throwing shit in the water. Yeah, 30, <laughs> yeah. 30,000 dolphins are killed per year off the coast of France in bycatch. Yeah. It's nuts, dude. It was, like, it opened my mind to see how bad, like, or, dude, get this. Some of the uh, fishing companies that were actually awarded, um, like, eco-friendly, sustainable medals have outrageous bycatch numbers in the hundreds of thousands of fish that weren't purposefully caught per year. The way we conduct fishing, dude, we're decimating populations all over yeah. the globe. It's terrible. Yeah. Yeah, it Overfishing is. is, like, a big problem in a lot of dude, areas. It's a... crazy. Salmon's, salmon stock has dipped 99% in, wow. since 1970. Cod oh, is down 86 percent like we are decimating all the most common fish and tuna is like 94 percent all the most yeah. common fish that the human race eats are like down bro it's fine. Fine. we'll just 3d print it in five years <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty terrifying i mean i just think like fishing probably needs to change over the long term like well, the commercial way fishing definitely. does yeah well uh, i don't think like regular dude, like the easiest way to solve like the corrosion inside the ocean and the plastic issues probably is to regulate commercial fishing or, or like figure a way to slow the amount the population yeah, we're just being making nets that can disintegrate after a certain amount of time into the water because dude the plastic straw like or sorry the the fucking what is it the cardboard hey, straws I are, are so are so, so like small oh paper so straws small. do nothing yeah. for the environment like they do <laughs> nothing it's so compared to plastic like like, a computer uses more carbon just to be made for you to use than, like, a piece of plastic, than, like, a piece of, like, plastic or paper straw. Like, the grocery bag, the reusable grocery bag you would use to go to the store uses more carbon than a fucking paper straw. Like, like... You're not doing anything by using them. You know what's the crazy? I love those people you see on campus that think they're like heroes because they're using paper straws or like those metal reusable straws. You know I was like, I read the a metal whole... ones are kind of cool. Yeah, but I read a whole article on it that doesn't like in the long term impact shit. Like you no, got to get these corporations for you for Dude, when litter. they introduced the plastic grocery bag, they actually thought it was gonna replace the uh, like cardboard. Or like uh, I forget what I think it's like cardboard grocery bag. I forget what they were like the recyclable one. They thought that people would reuse them, the paper bags. They thought people would reuse them, but they're so cheap to make that no one reuses the plastic bags. When in like the original model, people thought that they were actually going to be reused, and no one does. So they just went back to paper. No, they didn't. They actually just kept going with uh, the throwaway plastics. Yeah, but a lot of places some states went back to paper. And in Boston, they just banned bags. Like, you have to buy a bag. <laughs> I, I hate that so much, but it's one it's of It's stupid, bro. I go with, like, 20 different items, and they're like, you have to buy the bag. I was like, go fuck yourself. But forget that. I mean, the biggest shock to me was that 46% of uh, ocean plastic is actually produced by commercial yeah. fisheries. Like, that. if you That's want to surprising. solve the problems in the oceans, regulate commercial fishing. Regulate so the people clear. in the ocean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a there's another good documentary that kind of highlights that. It's called Jiro Dreams of Sushi. It's about a three Michelin star restaurant. But uh, yeah, they talk about like as a Michelin starred sushi chef, like there's there were fish that like when he started that were like beautiful that he loved that the, they just don't you can't get them anymore. They don't exist. Yeah. Like like we don't need like like. You see those like conveyor belts of sushi? Like why why does that exist? <laughs> like like if you're going to be buying sushi, you should be willing to spend the money to have cuz it takes a lot of effort to make the traditional way. I guess now we just have machines make it. So I other crazy thing that I that was in that Sea Spiracy documentary that was cool was like it talked about the decimation of shark populations particularly in in the Pacific because of the shark fin like trade in Asia and like how it's like a really fine delicacy that so many people want. Um, but like it talks about how when you cut off a tier one predator, like the apex predator of a uh, environment, then this level two predator then overpopulates because they eat level three, level three populations disappear. And then 
because of level three disappearing, level two then dies off because they have a shortage of food. So like sharks are a huge regulator of that environment too. And we're just decimating so many ocean species. Yeah. It was pretty cool. I love that documentary. I recommend everyone out there to go watch that Netflix one. It was really eye opening. That kind of just shows how like connected everything is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, for real. The new, uh, our planet really shows that pretty well too. I mentioned that before, though, so I won't go into it. Shows the polar bear on, a like, a floating piece of ice in the middle of the ocean. Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I don't good. get how those things survived with all the ice, bro. Like, to catch a seal. The seal, all it has to do is dive under, and it's gone. That's it. That's your meal for, like, the next month. Gone. Once yeah, you but have those... this small of a window to catch that fucking thing. No, but those those po- like polar bears can swim though. They can go in there too and swim. Yeah, but they're not gonna swim faster than a seal. That's true. I don't know. They Actually, like maybe they out. could. Bears can oh, swim pretty fast. Yeah. Polar bear versus Michael Phelps. Let's see it. <laughs> <laughs> bears can <laughs> swim pretty fast. Actually, I take that back. Well, they run like fifty miles per hour. They're yeah. fast. Yeah, they're yeah, super they're fast. Around. They're yeah. faster than humans at like everything. They can climb, climbing. That's the (laughs) thing, dude. Like, I don't want to get killed by a bear. Like, if I had to get killed by any animal, it'd be uh, probably, like, a big cat, like a puma or, like, a tiger. Have you seen that movie? (laughs) you seen that fucking movie? Remember what that that bear does to that guy, dude? That's what I'm saying. If you get killed by a big cat, right... They're, like, meant for hunting, so they'll kill you instantly. They'll just, like, bite your neck and you're you're gone, or they'll slash you with their fucking claws and you're done. But, like, a, a wolf pack would even be worse, because wolves, like, they'll still kill you fast, but there's, like, a whole bunch of them. They'll just tear you apart. A bear single-handedly holds you out and just rips you up <laughs> chunk by chunk, because they're not carnivores. They're omnivores. And they pounce, too. They'll, yeah. they'll like, break your, like... They beat the Bone fuck out of you before they eat you. That's yeah. the thing. Try to think of an animal that I'd like to, like, you know, if there was one, that would be a quick death. It probably is a big cat. It's either a big cat or a snake. Like a, a, a snake. venomous snake that might be able to take you out. Oh, a female seconds. got bug. No, snakes, I think, no. snakes don't bad. kill you fast, bro. They swallow they, you whole and digest you. Yeah, I'm talking about, though. like, one that would, like, release venom into my bloodstream and kill oh, you. Dude, that, that shit would make you, like, throw up blood yeah, before you... That, that venom kills small animals quickly. They don't kill humans quickly. Yeah. So I'd big cat. Cat or a shark. I'd say a shark would probably no, kill dude, you. Fast. Sharks, I do not, dude. You're going to get yeah. half eaten and then drowned. Well, honest, honestly, <laughs> sharks don't. Shark, most shark attacks are like, like, uh, Actually, don't really result in death. Like, sharks think they're like food. Sharks think that's like, like. Well, a different animal smaller mammals and once like, they just, realize yeah once they realize it's not their food they just like kind of fuck off <laughs> as you're getting killed like, by a gorilla the legs what or like an arm yeah 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 i, don't bleed out I mean the sometimes they do I'm kill not people that. But not that often they really not as kill die treading that water with one fucking arm i'm all set <laughs> i think um yeah, polar bears are, like, they're the largest predator, and grizzlies, though, I think are more aggressive, but I think tigers actually are the most aggressive predator, or not, sorry, not most aggressive, the most deadly, like, yeah. more people die from tigers than yeah. any other, Yeah, tigers because they just are pretty scary. so fast, dude, they yeah. can literally just slice you in half. They're also thing is, like, big. cats, they're also domesticated big. cats are assholes, like, of course, the bigger version of them <laughs> is gonna be scary. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. yeah. I guess. I don't like cats very much. <laughs> yeah. I don't Barely. like them. They're all right. I like cats and dogs equally. I don't know why it's yeah. always got to be. No, no, no. I like dogs, dogs for sure. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I like cats them. are not affectionate at all unless you have a cat that acts more like a Maybe dog. Maybe they just don't like you. Maybe they think you're a piece of shit. <laughs> they just smell like piss or something and it pisses them off. I don't think I think pet fish are stupid. I don't know why people have no, that. Dude, nah, do dude, fish are stupid. I used to bro. have a beta fish actually in like fifth grade. Those How things survive forever. Dude, fish are sick. No, bro, fish are so lame. I literally, no, 
I literally sure went really to like Connecticut for a weekend with my grandparents and my family and we came back and my beta fish was still fucking alive. I was like sick. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't feed this thing for like yeah. four days. Still alive. Okay. Pretty great. Those things like each other when they get hungry. Beta fish are psycho. Yeah. Beta fish yeah. is probably the best pet fish to get any kid because it'll survive. Yeah. It'll true. just yeah. stay alive. A lot of the time, like, if you get, like, an aquarium tank, too, it's such high maintenance, so it's just better off to get a beta fish, leave it in a fucking bowl, and put some, like, uh, bamboo in it. Yeah. It. Well, you gotta understand. clean the bowl still. You, like, get, like, a thing and, like, pour water in it, and you get a little, like, nah, net. You just wait you until it it's there. dead. You and just wait until it's dead. And then you clean all the algae out. And then you fucking shit. dump it in the backyard. <laughs> no. I think a pet bird would be kind of weird. I don't. I never got the appeal no, of that. No, like, what if it flies away? Yeah. The thing is, if you have a pet bird, you're doing... Oh, what was that? I think they clip birds' wings sometimes. Oh. So they yeah. don't, like, really, like, fly. Jeez. That's kind of sus, actually. I wouldn't want a pet bird. I would take a yeah, cat or dog, probably. I get a pet cat. Take, like, you pick or I like get a, a pet rapid. cat and then get a pet bird and then film it. <laughs> That's what I Bro, would this do. kid I know, this kid, this kid I know from Arlington actually, he has um, he had a pet snake, and um, he used to like feed it like a like a um a mouse, and he'd like try and film the snake like to go like attack and kill the mouse and eat it. And there was one time I remember he was filming it, and it literally wasn't happening. And then they were like hanging out together, and he was like, "Are you fucking serious?" <laughs> like they were literally just like chilling. That's sick. I was like, Dude, there was uh, this, there used uh, to be a YouTube channel. Sorry, that was like uh that would like buy exotic animals and put them in little like um, is it terrarium? What do you call those like little aquarium? Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> it's not. It's like the the land version of that. Whatever that's called. Yeah, it's like but a terrarium. Put them in these little, I guess. Yeah, it's like. Uh, he'd put them inside this little like uh, box, and then they'd fight it out, and he'd just document it all and upload it on YouTube. Like Super Smash Bros. Scorpions, yeah. like versus uh, uh, spiders. And you stuff think like Mike that. Vick would be a fan? <laughs> I was. I don't know. <laughs> I think Mike Vick would be a fan. That's like something. That's like like real life Pokemon or something. <laughs> Gambled on Reddit. <laughs> yeah, my uh, my friend back in elementary school, he used to have like a bearded dragon. So if we saw like like grasshoppers, we'd like catch them and put them in the tank with the bearded <laughs> dragon. Feast. Yeah, yeah. They used to have like mason jars with like like crickets and stuff and grasshoppers, so they they could feed it to the lizard. I was like, bearded dragons are cool, but I won't want to keep like jars of fucking insects in my house. That's the rush. <laughs> Do you have any pets? Or, uh, did you have any pets growing up? I have two dogs. Told you, dogs are better. What kind of dogs? I have a snoodle, which is a poodle and a schnauzer, and then a little yeah. monkey. They're just two like small dogs. Oh, nice. Awesome. Yeah. My I really is a black coat German Shepherd. Yeah, dude, oh, German Shepherds are sick. Yeah, German Shepherds are pretty. It's like good. the ultimate military dog to own, like loyal, like uh, super protective of owners. I like German yeah. Shepherds. They're a cool dog. Yeah. If shit hits the fan, too, the ultimate dog to have is is a German Shepherd. Jake will be the grandpa that unleashes it on, like, kids for playing baseball in his backyard. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I really, want, I really want a Golden Retriever and uh, a Lab. Those are, like, some of my favorite dogs. Golden Retriever is such a yuppie dog to want. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I think uh, they're yuppies pretty cool. All, yeah, yuppies have fucking, they always have uh, Labradoodles. Yeah. <laughs> they always yeah. have like some sort of mix or like but, uh, uh what are those time yorkies yeah yorkies. that's a grandma yeah. dog dad my, that grandma. Is a grandma. my grandma has a yorkie bro yeah, yeah. <laughs> my neighbor <laughs> across the street who's a grandma used to have a dog like that no i think uh, i would take a lab golden retriever german shepherd would be cool german shepherd. uh like one of those border collies like the shepherd dogs i think those are cool what about a greyhound That'd be kind of cool. Yeah, I like Brawlers. Probably be, like be Bills, though. A lot of I hunters actually Brawl have Wilder. greyhounds. Do you guys know what a Isla is? A what? Isla. Isla? No. Not sure, actually. It's like a hunter-built dog. Okay. Mm-hmm. They're so nice. And, like, they're, um... They're, they have, like, short-haired fur. Ah. Oh. 
one of those. Oh, I like be... that. Yeah. If I were to get a dog, it would be one with, like, like short hair fur, because I feel like, like, clean up with, like, retrievers and stuff would just be such a pain. Yeah. I think another sick breed is Doberman Pinscher, too. It's another, like, uh, pretty protective. You know the dog I want? I want Rhodesian Ridgeback. I want a Rhodesian Ridgeback <laughs> one, dude. They oh, were bred dude, to hunt actually... lions. Yeah. Yeah, they used to the they used to help like listed. back in the days when like like people <laughs> hunted lions they would like they would help corral lions for humans to kill pretty badass yeah that's facts yeah. dude there's sick dog breeds out there yeah <clears throat> yeah all right so now we're gonna move on to reddit advice as we do every episode so jake's gonna tell us some of these stories people have left for us on reddit and we'll give them some advice so, all right so as we were just mentioning animals um this is from user cat juggler 23 on our advice um and the post says girlfriend's high school son is a drug dealer hi i live with my girlfriend both 51 and her two sons 18 and 16 the 18-year-old has been caught a couple of times and arrested for possession of weed. He also has anger issues and is basically a pathological liar. <laughs> Last week, I went into his room and I noticed he had 15 to 20 bullets on his desk. When his mom said something, he claimed he just thought they were cool. As time went on, I became to have, be more and more uncomfortable with this. He went away for spring break, so I decided to check his room. Smith & Wesson Pistol. I know at 18 he can legally own it, but there's no way he did legally own it. <laughs> Large bag of mushrooms, acid, bag of white powder, several aver- or several ounces. I don't know if it was coke, um, but it might be. It, there was a shit ton of it. Um, and also edi- edible pot products. Doesn't have a job, oh, oh. always has money. <laughs> Ooh. Doesn't have a job, but it always has money. Not sure what to do. I also think if nothing gets done, someone might end up getting shot. I have submitted a tip to um, Crime Stoppers. Ooh, so he probably contacted the police a couple weeks back, back but nothing has come of this. He's a snitch. snitch. Yeah, he snitched on your girlfriend's son. It's fucked. Well, he's probably, his girlfriend's son probably sounds like kind of a dick, so that's probably why he snitched. <laughs> sounds well, like I a don't drug know. dealer is what he sounds yeah, like. No, he's bro. Making- as long as he doesn't shoot anybody. Here's the thing. He could be a drug dealer or he could just be a day trader. <laughs> dude, dude. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Even if he is a drug dealer, okay, if no one gets harmed, I don't see the issue with it. I mean, the only I would honestly sit down with him and say, you know, I don't have an issue with you selling weed, um, but the coke's got to stop. Yeah. And that you can also continue with the psychedelics, mushrooms, and acid. I would just tell him basically to stop coke dealing. Yeah, that'd be my advice. Yeah, to be fair, the one thing is if if he's living in the guy's house, and the guy doesn't want that association, I think that it's probably not a good idea. Like I, I'd probably, if I was the dad, I'd be like, look, like I don't want the feds busting down my yeah. door because you got weed. Well, I yeah, don't I think, think the feds would bust down like his 60, door for right? weed, and I also don't think the feds would bust bust down his door for acid or mushrooms. They just but said cocaine before, it though. Might, well, I think might. this is I probably in like the, a south. With the amount of drugs, it sounds like this kid had. It's like like. Like if you're if you're like a street level dealer, right? Whoever you're getting a supply like that from, they're not gonna just let you just like stop. So basically, <laughs> as as like the man who owns the house, or if the girlfriend owns the house, uh, they either gotta kick him out or tell him to like move and support him in moving. They gotta do one or the other. Cause if it's in your house and you get caught by the cops, like they're gonna take your fucking kids away so. yeah but if it was my son and they're like 16 or 17 i wouldn't want them to live on their own so they can have a trip yeah i wouldn't out. kick them out i would basically take Probably the gun cool. and i would also take the coke well the actually the, wait i wouldn't take the coke i would say bring this back to where you got it and if i find it again then you're out of here essentially yeah, he, because i don't think you can like... dispose of that much coke and not get like <laughs> shot for it he's gonna buy some coke to deal and just be like hey yo guys sorry but uh <laughs> My dad said I couldn't sell this, so can you just take it back? I'm sure they'll be really receptive to that. <laughs> yeah, I don't that's... know. What would what would you say, um, Siraj, with this scenario? 
honestly tough. Like, I agree. You got to get rid of the Coke. The Coke's the only thing for me. Like, you just can keep the other ones. Yeah. Yeah, but no, still, if I was a dad, I wouldn't want my fucking 16 year old ripping shrooms. <laughs> it, I wouldn't. It, it's not my. Okay, we live in a free society, okay? It's not my say. It's your say what goes on in the house. But yeah, I'm but he's dad. living in the house. If he had his I'm own really house, dad. it wouldn't matter. Jake, if you ever have kids, write this episode number down <laughs> so, so you can show it to them. I'm telling you right now, I wouldn't have an issue with weed, uh, shrooms, or acid. I just yeah. wouldn't. Does I know the I would. Especially the weed. Guns. Like, come on, weed guys. Are we five edibles? Well, the thing is, by the fuck. by the time someone has the coke, it's it's a big problem because if you get <laughs> rid of it, that means some random fucking more hardcore drug dealers could show up at your door, or and if you let your son deal it, people get fucked up. And cops could come show up at your door. So that's a really tough situation. It's a tough situation. I'm surprised you didn't catch on to it sooner. Actually, you guys want to hear some of the comments? Let's see. He probably did catch. No. Like, he probably knew for a good chunk of the time. But it's just like, like, when he went on spring break, he probably. Also, spring break. Is this kid in school? Um, yes, it's like yeah, a side is. hustle. Um, yeah. Wow, they're actually pretty aggressive in the comments. They said, leave that house if you own it. Tell her to leave, and then you can immediately move back in once she's gone. After you have a new place to live, uh, talk to your girlfriend and clarify how you plan to live your life and the red lines uh, not to be crossed. Uh, yeah, you don't if he owns that house, you got to you gotta get that kid out of there. If you own that house, you got to get all that out. Yeah, well, I'm not saying the kid. You just got to get rid of the drugs. Yeah, no, but the I mean, kid's not going to let you get rid of the drugs, bro. <laughs> I would turn it over to, like, one of those, like, no, like uh, what are those, narco cops? Like, the ones that, like, take you to, like, rehab and shit. The like, only problem it... I see with this is that I don't think, like, once this kid's dealing coke, this has become, like, a major problem that I don't think, like, a good pep talk with them's going to really change. <laughs> yeah, exactly. like, oh, stop like, selling yeah. coke. Sure, Steph, yeah, <laughs> to you. Yeah, like, Not sure, Steve, that. gotcha, buddy. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You need to get one of those, like, narcos involved. Fucking asshole. I think there, there are a lot of, like, smart kids who deal drugs in high school, but, like, uh, this kid, if, if you have anger issues, a bag of coke and a pistol, that, those are all red flags. Like, that, anger issues, Not I think, was the main, uh, anger issues is definitely the main, like, giveaway that yeah. like this dude might not be in the right space to like do this and get away with it yeah i think they need to contact some sort of authority for that honestly to defuse the situation yeah you guys want another one yeah let's do one more um all right so we're gonna cut this part out but do you guys like this one what are some ways i can masturbate <laughs> i got i got i have an idea <laughs> All right, do you want to do this one, or is this too crusty for this show? It's never too crusty for I'll me. I'll do it. I don't mind. All right, let's do it. All right. This is from Solo89. Wait, are we doing this together right now? Oh, is that, is that not what you meant? <laughs> All right, so what are some ways I can masturbate? Hi, I had a toy vagina, and while I was in the hospital, it was thrown out. I want to know how I can masturbate. I usually have my penis up and hump on the bed. Gee. <laughs> I know this is bad for my penis. Oh my god. But the only reason I jack off that way is for a quick ejaculation. Are there any materials on the internet other than porn, even though I masturbate <laughs> with it, uh, that could tell me how to masturbate? <laughs> how old is this guy? Jeez. The there fuck? are no comments. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, here's an idea, bro. Use your fucking hand like any other person. Yeah, why waste your money? <laughs> oh, no, there are comments. I just had them on best. So these are the comments. Um, the first one is wiki how. I guess wiki how and then the next one is use a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, Bro, hell no. the next one is google diy fl fleshlight 
Oh, that's so funny. I'm sorry. I love that. I love that post. I just love it. Yeah, I don't know. You should probably just hit up like a sex shop. That's probably more. <laughs> This more guy's there. so horny. He's like humping his bed. <laughs> Get <laughs> off, dude. Probably more their cup of tea. <laughs> That's foul. That's actually foul. That is pretty foul. <laughs> I don't have much advice for this guy besides like stop. Just stop. <laughs> How Clearly, the yeah, that I think this guy needs a therapist is what this guy needs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, probably. Or he needs a better hobby. Like he needs to start like going to the gym or something. Yeah. Yeah, buy a jump rope. Bro. You don't you don't need a flashlight. You need a fucking jump rope and some whey protein, bro. <laughs> yeah. Just an easy car. Yeah. One more. We'll do one. Yeah, that was fast. We'll do one more, and then and then we should call it. That's probably what that guy's bed is thinking. <laughs> All right, so this is on our advice again, um, and it's by user Apple Pie Crumble Nine. <laughs> All right, so how do I talk to my conspiracy loving dad? I, 25 female, receive a lot of emails from my dad with conspiracy theories about some of the world events. He has always been a conspiracy kind of guy my whole life, but it's really gotten bad lately. Now, whether you believe in these conspiracies or not is really not the point. I mostly just want to stop hearing them. As much as I would love him to stop spreading them around, I don't think that will ever happen. So I just want him to stop sending them to me. Any advice on how to ask him respectfully but firmly? What do you guys think? Um, just tell him to stop. <laughs> so the top comment is hi dad please stop sending me these types of emails i don't read them nor care about them you're not changing my opinion let's agree to disagree on certain topics and leave it at just that that's not yeah, that honestly response. that's kind of what i would say as well you could tell him know. stop reading these articles just watch these documentaries then you'll just get like five second text that you don't even have to read. Yeah. What, what, what do you think? What would you do, Siraj, if you were in this person's shoes? Literally just ask him to stop nicely. And then if he keeps sending you these emails, just block his email. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Yeah, honestly, Sick you more. don't really need to communicate with bad. your parents over email like, too often. No, why did she even care to keep them in her email co or in her email contacts? Like yeah. what? At some point, just cut them off in email. Yeah. <laughs> just be ready to hear about it the next time you see him. <laughs> yeah. That's probably true. I mean, really, just yeah, you just gotta like the answer is pretty simple. Flat Earth guy. Like, hey, Dad, I love you, but uh, I, miss I don't want to read no this anymore. So please stop. Uh. Uh. Did you guys hear all, all gas, right. no brakes got taken down on, uh, or it didn't get taken down, sorry, but uh, like Andrew Callahan, the main host on that YouTube channel that like dives into American subcultures. Yeah. Um, his channel got taken over by the company that hired him to like travel across the country. They, like, cut him out, his percentage out of the show, so now he no longer runs the show. Oh, so the channel is just inactive. That's sad. Yeah, made me sad because I love that guy's channel. That dude yeah, signed a shitty fun. contract, I guess. Yeah, he did sign a shitty contract. He did it from the get-go, too, because he needed, like, $12,000 and a van up front. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's so, the most fucking hipster right. thing I've ever heard of. <laughs> you ready to wrap it up, then? Yeah, I think so. All right, so this here concludes episode 29 of Straight No Chaser. I'd like to thank my guest, Siraj, once more for coming on and telling us a little bit about his passion and his lifestyle. Um, so make sure you tune in next week for more content coming out soon. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe. Keep supporting the channel. And you can follow us on Instagram at straightnochaser.ent. Thank you so much, guys. See you next week. <laughs>